page. I just post our first project, project description. Yeah, you can see the project. Let me uh, quickly explain uh, this project. Provide a computing service. Here, I give you four weeks, starting from today, Wednesday, then after four weeks, that's the due date. All right. Uh, in this project, we want to practice the basic features we just learned for service and the JSP. Okay. And uh, in our first project, I do not use the database, JDBC. Yeah. I leave that part into our second project. Yeah, so this one, you do not need to worry about JDBC, but you need to spend some time to digest our JDBC examples. Then at that time, you will be ready for second project. All right, so here, uh, let's look at this web applications. All right, first, you need to have a JSP page for user's interface. Here, remember, I mentioned one simple feature when I talk about header part, HTTP protocol, the header part. In the header part, we can detect the user's operating system. Here, I just use Windows machine or Mac machine, okay? If the user uses Windows machine, then you should send the Windows page to that user. If you detect the user uses Mac machine, then you should send the Mac page to that user. So that's the first feature. All right. Then a server is used to provide the core corporate, uh, computing service. Here we use simulation. What kind of computing service? Later I will provide some math operation. We need to do some math, special math operation to simulate some special computing service in this project. Another JSP page is used to display computation result. Yeah. Your service, after you do data processing, you need to show the computation result in your result JSP page. Yeah. A preparation server may be needed to retrieve some initial data from the web XML so that so that the first JSP page can display it as a UI component. Let me describe this part. All right. Here, when we do simulation on computing service, then at the end, we need to provide invoice to our customers. You need to because you know, we here we do this kind of business simulation, your customers order some special business service. After you provide your customers that business service, you need to send invoice to your customer, right? You know, put some charge, charge the you know fees, itemized fees. All right, yeah. When you send the invoice to your customers, then to the itemized service charge, you need to base on the customer's cities. Your customer may come from different cities, right? Yeah. Based on different cities, the tax rates are different. You need to select the appropriate tax rate for that particular city. All right, so this part, this information, we will prepare 
in our web.xml file. We set it as initial parameters. I will show you the example to do that. Here, you don't worry, because this feature I have not shown you in the class. So this feature, still you do not know it. Abedesis, Abraham, all right, I will, I will add you in the role call of the class. All right. Uh, here, this part, I will show you a simple example. Retrieve initial parameters from web.xml, then prepare for UI component display on the user's first page so the user can make selection. City selection, then the text selection will be based on the city selection, okay, automatic. So you, the user only needs to select a city, okay, city from the drop down list, drop down list, city selection. After the city is selected, then the corresponding text ray associated with that city will be displayed at the same time. So then the user click the order button, order that service, make the order, okay? Make the order. Then a request is sent to the data processing server. The data processing server will do that computing service. I would describe that computing service you know, simulation computing service next. Then the service result will be displayed and invoice service charge will also be displayed. That's the project. That's the whole project. Okay. Yeah. So based on this whole description, we, we can practice several basic features we just learned at this point. Okay, yeah. All right, so I give you the story and next the requirements. Yeah, let me go through the requirements a little bit. Okay, yeah. When, the, number one, when the web application starts, the welcome file, redirects the request to a server to prepare for the initial data. That redirect, remember we just learned redirect forward. Here we use that redirect feature. Okay, pretty simple. Yeah, all right. Number two, in the preparation server, you retrieve the user's operating system information from the request headers. Remember, I gave you one example. Remember, request view example, right? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, there is one our one of our early examples. It contains the operating system information in the header. You just go back, find that way. Yeah, so you can retrieve the operating system that line that you parse that line to get Windows, Mac, that information to tell you which operating system is used by the user. So then you can send appropriate page to the user. Yeah. All right. Number three. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. You also need to retrieve the initial parameters from the web.xml. So in your server, you need to do two things. First, user's OS detection. Second, initial parameter retrieval and data preparation in your first server. All right, yeah. The city data is stored in a string array. Uh, yeah. 
and put yeah here I yeah string and put in a request scope. Put in a request scope. Okay, yeah. The user's input number four. The user input page will display the city options as a drop down list so that a user can select the suitable city for the product. Yeah. So here, uh, here, I may like to, yeah, because this project description, uh, I used before. Okay, yeah, I use this project, uh, this one. Th this is my old version of uh, project description. But this semester, uh, because we have learned a lot of features. Now, in my old version, because I assigned a little earlier to the class, so I didn't add many features. Here we have learned more features than that several years ago. This one three years ago, yeah. And at, at this point, we have learned more features. So I may like to modify this project slightly. The story is still the same, but some feature requirement I may modify slightly so that we can practice a few more features. For example, the data here, I may like you to put the data in a Java B here. In this description, I didn't talk about Java B. Yeah. But now, in order to make you practice Java B to send data, I may like to add a Java B. So you put the city information, tax rate information in a Java B and send it to the front page for display. Yeah, so I will modify slightly to talk about that Java Bean. All right, yeah. Then at the user's display page, you need to present data from Java Bean. The city dropdown list, tax rate dropdown list, city tax dropdown list from Java Bean. Okay, yeah, all right, okay, yeah. So I will modify slightly, yeah, drop down list. All right, then product simulation or service simulation. Here, the simulation task I use decompose a big integer. We generate a big integer. Then we make prime decomposition. Prime decomposition. Okay. Yeah. The prime decomposition. Uh, yeah. All right. So then uh, input number is a prime. But input number, in my old description, I asked the user enter input number. This one, I may like you use a random generator function to make that big number, big integer, okay? Yeah, I may, I may like to ask you to generate 100 digit, 100 digit integer. 100, not too big, just 100 digits, okay? Big integer. Then you do prime uh, factorization on it. Yeah, because if the digit, too many digits, the service could be very slow, all right? 100 digits, the service may not be very slow, all right? Yeah, so I plan to ask you to do prime factorization on 100 digit big integer okay all right after that we display the prime factorization result yeah all right so then i i describe the format how to describe the factorization format yeah yeah all right so the details uh i may 
I may specify detail in a newer version. Yeah, here, you know, this version, but I may plan to modify this part for the new format. Yeah. For your prime factorization. Okay. Yeah. After that, you complete that simulation service. All right. Then you display the result and also you display the invoice. Yeah, because you provide the service to your customers, you need to charge some service fee based on the service. Yeah. Here, uh, I give you the way you calculate the service charge. Okay, service charge and the tax rate. Also add a tax based on the city, the user selected city tax rate, all right? Yeah, all right. So then after that, yeah, we do not do the payment part, okay? The payment. So, so after that service charge uh, invoice display, it's done. So we do not do the payment simulation. That step, we skip it. Question, John. So we just, um, after it's, after we calculate, can we just do an invoice as if they paid, but just- Yes, pay? yeah, as if, yeah. We do not make, you know, credit card simulation, <laughs> you know, yeah. PayPal, you know, we do not make that kind of simulation. Yeah. We just invoice, you know, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there any requirements for like on invoice what format? No. <laughs> I only need to I, I give you description, you know, the service charge, tax rate, tax total, you know, that kind of thing. Tax rate, yeah. So let your user know, you know, the tax rate. Then the text, no. Text, sale, you know, yeah. Adding together the total charge. That's it. No. The format, you design your own format. I ask you the items I need. You just arrange the format you like. Okay. Invoice, yeah. Not necessary to be fancy. Yeah. You know, some people, students may like to design, you know, good looking, fancy invoice, not necessary. Okay. Simulation, no. not real business. Real business, then you may like to put a, you know, professional invoice, logo of your company, right? You know, contact information, you know, some nice, beautiful, you know, things but we do a simple our first project of this class we practice several technologies okay java b and el we're learning el so we can also use el feature but but that those things optional <laughs> okay yeah, recommended recommended but optional, yeah, because some people they feel not not feel comfortable, so they just use the old way. Yeah, anyway is okay. Okay, yeah. and uh, next time we will learn JSTL. We can also use JSTL to present drop down list. We have a drop down list. How do you display drop down list? We need a for loop, right? Yeah, because how many items in the drop down list? You don't know. So you need to run a for loop through the cities. How many cities do you provide service? You don't know, right? Nobody knows how many cities. So that part is open. So we use a for loop, go through. Only when you receive the Java B, you know how many cities stored in the Java B. Before you receive the Java B, you don't know how many cities. Okay, yeah. So that point, uh, oh, several pieces. Uh, I can provide some simple examples in the class, in, in my lectures, 
I show you a few pieces, okay? The feature, feature one, feature two, Java Bing way, initial parameter way, job long list. How about I show you a few pieces in my class, okay? Yeah, so try to help you a little bit. If you need some special help, you let me know so I can address that in my class, in my lecture, okay? Beginning, let me try to control use 15 to 20 minutes to cover that part, okay? The first 15 to 20 minutes, I cover some special features in this project, okay? If you feel you know, some feature very hard to implement, you can let me know, I can give you hints, suggestions, okay? All right, yeah, so that's our first project, okay? All right, so any question, Zoom size student, any question? John, you have some question? Oh, good, yeah. Zoom size students, do you have any questions? Yeah. If not, oh, someone has a question? Zoom size students, I hear some voice a little bit, yeah. All right. If not, I need to move to the next step. Next step, remember the last time I talked about forward redirect the difference. And I post a simple example called forward request. Here I explain that example, simple example. All right. Look at my, yeah probably a little small yeah maybe the zoom size students can see better because you can see closer to your computer yeah, yeah but uh, uh yeah all right so you can see i have a forward servlet and a redirect servlet let us look at the inside part all right here I open the forward servlet. I just use the standard way I described in the our previous lecture, which page we want to forward our request to, page one dot JSP. Yeah. So here we have a page one, page two. Okay. All right. Before I make the forwarding action, I add a data. Data equals my value request dot set attribute i store a piece of data in the request scope then view the forward so i send it to page one dot jsp that's the forward servlet then redirect servlet we do comparison redirect here we store data request dot set attribute data your value two different values okay we we store it in the request scope also same re, uh, you know request scope but this time we do redirect send response dot send redirect page two dot jsp all right then let's look at a page one and a page two page one let me open page one dot jsp Page one, all right, to display data, we use a scriptlet, string val, we retrieve from get attribute data, we retrieve data in this way, in that val, then out.println, we display it, okay? Whatever value it is, we just display that value, okay? Yeah, that's page one dot JSP. Let's look at page two dot JSP. Page two dot JSP, you can see the code is basically the same. Redirect JSP, similar code, but this time we display data stored page, you know, in the redirect servlet. Redirect servlet. Yeah, we display it. All right. Then welcome page index.html 
This one, I just put a two hyperlinks. The first hyperlink forward points to URL pattern forward servlet. Second, redirect hyperlink, it points to redirect servlet URL pattern. All right, yeah, see, okay, yeah. So you click, you call the servlet. We call two different servlets. The return result, we compare what is the difference of the return result to understand what we learn, different properties, forward redirect for comparison. Give you concrete understanding. All right, let me run it so you will see the result difference. All right. Right click. Run on server. Yeah. All right. Finish. All right. Two hyperlinks. Forward redirect. First time, let us call forward servlet. See what data can we get? My value. Right? As expected. Because in that server, we store that value, data as the name of the attribute, value, my value. All right. Let's go to the try the redirect way. Yeah. Pretty much the same thing, but the way is different. This time, let's call redirect. Okay. No, nothing. Remember, we store your value, right? Now, let me go back to the, the code, redirect server. Look at this. Request or set attribute data, your value in the request scope. Why, when we try to display it, we just, you couldn't display it. You, you get a null. No data, no. What's that? Why is that? The key difference, remember the key difference I pointed out. All right. When you use the forward way, after you place the data, you forward it to the page one.jsp, page one stays in the same request scope as your forward servlet. Same request scope. So you can retrieve the data in the same request scope. Yeah. But when you do redirect, page two.jsp, redirect to page two.jsp, page two starts a new request scope. Your old request scope is gone, okay? Remember, you store the data as your value. It is in the old request scope. But after you do redirect, the first request scope terminates and a new request scope starts. In the new request scope, your old data is gone. So you couldn't display your old data. That's the reason you see now. It's gone, okay? That's the difference. Here, I let you use this simple example to feel about difference between forward and redirect, okay? Then later you will know on the what situation you should use a forward, on the what situation you should use redirect. Simply, if you need to store data in the request scope, you use forward. If you do not need to store data in the request scope, you use redirect. That simple. That simple. All right? Okay? Yeah. In our project, we will have the situation. Okay? Yeah. We will store our Java B in a request scope our Java B in a request scope, okay? If you use redirect, your Java B is gone. If you use redirect, your Java B is gone, all right? So, but if you use forward, your Java B is still there, you can retrieve it and display it. That's the difference, forward redirect, okay? Yeah. Be careful when you select which method to use.
to move your web flow to the next page. Two options, one is better than the other. Okay, all right, so that's it. That's for, you know, project description and forward redirect example from our previous lecture. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now, let me switch to our new topic, still EL, but we can we learn more features. Yeah. All right. So let me start part B of module four. All right. Title, part B, rules and properties for expression language. B.1, properties for dot operator in EL. We have two operators, right? Square bracket operator and the dot operator. Dot operator is the old way. Square operator is the new way. But we need to learn the dot operator first. Then square operator next square bracket bracket operator next all right okay. yeah. dot operator in el let's look at the main properties of the dot operator left hand variable of an el expression left hand remember that dollar curly braces person dot name left hand that the person part left hand of the dot operator that person that part all right if the expression has a variable followed by a dot person followed by a dot the left hand variable must be here two cases a map object or a bin bin jsp bin yeah, yeah. Map object. Map object. Remember, last time we mentioned the attributes. Attributes. Okay. Yeah. But those attributes we use, we like to make those attributes these two types map object type or, or, being type these two types then you can use this el to display data okay all right yeah. the right of the dot in an el expression the thing to the right of the dot must be a map key yeah map object we know basically a set of a set of key value pairs what is a map object right yeah if you forget the structure it is a set of key value pairs okay yeah so that's the structure of map object okay yeah each item has a key part and a value part. Okay, yeah. Here, right, the thing to the right of the dot must be map key. That's the key part. Okay, key part. Or bean property. If, if it's a bean, then it should be the bean property, these two cases. Okay, yeah. From the key, then EL will give return its value yeah. being property you call getter getter of this property to get a property value okay yeah so that's the way yeah to get the value of a map item item through its key item means 
key value pair is corresponds to one item. One pair, key value pair, corresponds to one item through its key. Yeah. Yeah. All right. To get a value of the property through its name, yeah, by that getter. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is true regardless of whether the left hand variable is an implicit object. It could be an implicit object, all right, or an attribute. Yeah, because implicit object takes those two possible format, map, format, and the bin format. All right, the attribute also takes that those two forms. All right, yeah. Then let us look at the implicit object. Remember, I give you a list of implicit objects. There are nine of them, right? Yeah. Four plus five, four commonly used. Then five, you know, relatively less frequently used, total nine, all right? <laughs> Among those nine implicit objects, only this one, page context. This implicit object is a bin. And the remaining eight or map, remaining eight or map type. Yeah. All other implicit objects are map objects. Yeah. So you just know this fact. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's the dot operator. Yeah. Second, we look at the square bracket operator. Extra features of the square bracket operator. Extra feature, that means the older features from the dot operator, the square bracket operator has them all, okay? So we inherit, the square bracket operator inherits all the old features from the dot operator, then add a few more extra features. Here we only talk about the extra features. All right. The left hand variable of square bracket operator, first map object, that's the old one. Yeah, old dot operator supports this object. So the square bracket also supports this one. Being yeah, another old one, yeah, it supports a being. Then a new one, the new one, a list object. Dot operator does not support list object, but square bracket operator supports this list of being, list of objects. Yeah, a list object. Yeah, that object is a list object. Okay, all right. For example, yeah, it is list of my B, for example. Java generics here, when we use list object, we use Java generics. Okay. Yeah, if you are not familiar with this concept, later I will talk about this concept. Okay, Java generics, a basic concept. Yeah. All right, I will talk about that sometime later. Yeah. List object, an array, array object. We know array of some data type that array itself is an object, right? You treat the whole array as one single object. String array, integer array, you treat that whole array as one single object. Okay, so array, object. And uh, the last two cases, new features, extra new features for square bracket operator. All right, yeah. 
thing inside the brackets. What are those cases you can put inside brackets? If the thing inside brackets is a string letter, yeah, you need to put in quotes. Quotes. Single quotes, double, double quotes, usually double quotes. Okay. If you single quotes, yeah, probably fine. Yeah. Quotes. Okay. Yeah. String letter. Yeah. A map key. Yeah. You can also put a map key enclosed in quotes also. Quotes, map key. Yeah. All right. Being property enclosed in quotes. Quotes. Okay. All right. An index into a list. Or, all right. Yeah. For the last two cases, case number three, case number four, how do you refer to individual data item in it? Index. Index, you have that integer. You can use that integer inside that square brackets. But when you put inside with quotes or without quotes, both ways fine, both ways legal. With quotes, without quotes, both ways legal, okay? Yeah. Later, we will talk about data conversion. So we will get to this point again. Data conversion, okay? Quotes, string, form, without quotes, integer form, then an automatic data conversion occurs behind the scene. So you don't worry, yeah, just put one way there, yeah. All right. For a map key, it can contain, can it contain a space parameter? Map key, when we define a map key, it is a string literal, right? A string literal can contain a space character, right? Yep. Yeah. So the answer is yes. So you can put a space character in your name of your attribute, okay? Yeah. So you have a quotes around that string. Yeah. The second one, being property, can it contain a space character? Being property, one single property, you cannot. That's not allowed. Space character, not allowed. Okay, yeah, all right. And uh, there is another case, not in quotes. String literal here, because when you use quotes, that means that's a string literal. But there is another also useful case without using that string literal, without quotes. We will have more discussion on that way. Yeah. All right. B.3, more rules for EL expressions. Yeah. We just learned two, B.1, B.2, basic rules. Here, let us learn a few more rules and the properties. EL syntax is loosely typed. What do you mean loosely typed? Strong typed, loosely typed, the difference. Strong typed, you need to declare data type, right? When you have a data, if it's an integer variable, you need to declare it explicitly as integer variable. String variable. <laughs> and other different variables. Loosely type it, you do not need to declare. 
okay, loosely tied. You just use the data, you put the data there, then there is automatic data conversion. Okay, internal rules, some internal rules will be applied on your data to choose appropriate data type for you. For example, PHP, PHP loosely type it. Okay, yeah. So when you use the values, you do not need to declare integer strings, you know, uh, you just use your data directly. Java strong type it. You need to declare, okay? Integer variable, string variable, you know, all different variables explicitly. Yeah. Here, EL, because we want to make it as simple as possible. So we do not declare our data types. Okay, yeah. All right, so that means some implicit type conversions are there yeah, for the automatic data conversion. Okay. All right. The primary rule for an expression is that it should evaluate to some value. All right. So look at this item. What's the meaning? Your expression is expected to return some value okay whatever the value it is some value okay because some value usually the original form is object some value as an object but we know object can be converted to a string right so if you have some object then there is automatic conversion object to string conversion occurs automatically okay all right there's some value yeah. the reason we use this rule that means you should not do data processing using el el is not for data processing okay not for data processing Why is that? Because for data processing, we do not expect to return value, right? Data processing, we call a method, then that method does a lot of data processing. That's it. And we do not expect anything return. That kind of job, we should not use EL to do it. EL is used for data display, not for data processing, okay? So this rule tells you using the el in the right way data display way not data processing way that's the correct way using el okay all right you cannot declare variables within an expression or perform some kind of assignment or operation that does not result in value <laughs> so that kind of typical Java code, you should not put in EL. Don't do those things, those basic things usually you do for data processing. Okay, assignment, declaration, you know, those things. All right, yeah. So here it tells you to use EL in the correct way, all right. Index for an array or a list in an EL expression. Yeah. For the square bracket operator, this for square bracket order, you have the, this feature. For dot, you cannot, okay? For dot, so this feature not for the dot operator, right? Dot operator, dot index, that's wrong. You cannot do dot index, okay? Right? Square, 
bracket, index, that's legal. All right? Yeah. If the thing to the left of the bracket is an array or a list, and the index is a string, letter, double quotes, index, for example, double quotes five, sorry, yeah. So for example, let me write example, okay? My array, ARR, double uh, quote five, all right, yeah. Then data conversion, automatic data conversion, dollar, my ARR, without double quotes yeah because index value right coerced to int right string literal double quotes five the index is coerced to an integer in this way okay for you either way yeah, is fine both legal yeah all right yeah all right that is the b point three Okay, yeah, B point three. Yeah. All right. Next, B point four. Non string literal inside an EL expression. Non string literal, actually, it should be string literal that, non that. The meaning is that, yeah, it's not non-string, that literal, all right? Yeah, so we understand in this way. String literal as one phrase, all right? Not, not that, not that string literal thing. Yeah, that's the meaning, yeah. yeah I don't know how to write it correctly. Yeah. That's the meaning I want to, you know, talk about here. <laughs> string little that's one term but here not that we don't talk about that string literal thing so it's not that thing non that string literal thing all right inside an el expression so this is another important case so let me talk about this case if there are no quotes around the brackets that's also legal inside brackets. You enclose some name. You do not have to use a pair of quotes, but if you do not use a pair of quotes, it's a legal expression, but meaning could be slightly different. Here we talk about that meaning. All right, the container evaluates what inside the brackets by searching for an attribute bound under that name. So it treats that thing as a variable name, not a literal. So that's why here you understand here, that whole thing, it is not as literal, all right? Because literal would mean the value itself, right? The value itself the literal value. But here it looks like we like to use some variable. Right. Searching for an attribute bound under that name. Okay. Yeah. All right. And substitutes it by the value of the attribute. The attribute has a value, right? But here there is a substitution. There is the automatic substitution. Think about that. Later, I may create some examples, show you the difference. With quotes, without quotes, I like to show you the difference with a concrete example. So you can play around, then you can understand better. Okay? Yeah. All right. If there is an implicit object with the same name. The implicit object will 
always be used. That means this implicit object takes the precedence, higher priority. Yeah. So if you have implicit object and some other attributes with the same name, implicit object would take the precedence. Okay, yeah. Takes the precedence. Okay, yeah. The implicit object takes the precedence. All right. Example. Yeah. Look at this expression dollar curly braces person bracket name without double quotes this time no double quotes our previous version with double quotes so you understand the meaning of that right with double quotes but without double quotes yeah here searching the attributes in four different scopes right page request session application in that order make the search search for an attribute under the name double quotes name if the attribute is found under that name its value is used to replace the name here so you can see this name is treated as a variable Treat it as a variable. How about that? A variable. Okay. All right. All right. If yes, substitution. Make the substitution. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Next, the last topic today, B.5, places where el expressions cannot be placed some places you cannot use el expressions so we talk about those things in this b.5 all right what are those places we cannot place yeah all right first let me tell you the usual environment where we place el where do we put where do we use el all right yeah so i tell you that environment then when i talk about the places you cannot then you can understand better yeah. so can part okay can environment Can environment, all right? H T M L content. H T M L content. That is the can environment. Okay. In H T M L content, anywhere you drop that E L, that would work. That simple. See, yeah. Not Java environment. Okay. HTML content directly. Okay. Right? That's the typical environment for EL. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. For example, okay. It is a property dollar curly braces. Prop. Look at this example. This as an example. Okay. Yeah. This is text, right? In HTML. In anywhere in your text, you can drop that EL expression anywhere in your text. Because the purpose, to, yeah, to make you display data fast, simple more efficient don't do extra java coding do minimum java coding minimum java coding but you can display the data in the 
fastest way. That's the real purpose of EL. Here, it is when we talk about something, we want to display a piece of dynamic data in the quickest, fastest way. We put an EL. Now, think about if you do not have EL, you need to get it from your Java scopes. You need to write a lot of Java coding, right? Think about that. That's not convenient. A lot of Java code. So here, we avoid that. Yeah. All right. Then we can talk about place. You cannot. Okay? So this is the can. You cannot. All right. Directives are evaluated when GSP is compiled. Yeah. Then means directives you cannot put in EL. Yeah. Because at a compilation time, EL not available at a compilation time. EL not available at a compilation time. So that's why you cannot put EL in the directives. All right. But EL expressions are evaluated later. Well, I need to erase that. All right. When the JSP is rendered, EL is available at the render time. Render, render after compilation, right? After compilation, then you render the page. So EL is available at render time, not compilation time. Okay, yeah, all right. EL expressions are not valid within JSP declaration. In declaration, you cannot use EL. Scriptlets, you cannot use EL. Ex JSP expressions, you cannot use EL. You can see that those are the typical Java environment, right? Yep. These are typical Java environment. In typical Java environment, you cannot use EL. You need to use in HTML environment, not Java environment. See, all right, HTML environment, all right. How about JSP comments? JSP comments. All right, yeah. So we know for the JSP comments, we use these rules. The container just passes this stray on to the client where the browser interprets it as a common. Container passes straight without any extra data processing. All right pass to the web browser all right then you will go through render time right when you go through the render time el comes in how about that el comes in at the render time remember EL engine process EL at the render time. All right. Yeah. So think about that. All right. Any JSP tags within this comment will be evaluated. Yeah. But that's JSP tag. Here we're not the JSP tag. So the EAL different from JSP tag. Different from those JSP tags. Okay, all right. All right, so that's all we need for today. Yeah. So let me stop right here already. We use up our official time. Yeah. All right, so that's it.